Assalamu alaikum students this is Farwa Batool your O level computer science instructor and welcome to this course okay so in this video we are going to talk about methods used to design and construct a solution to a problem if you remember that in my previous video we have learned about decomposing a problem so decomposing a problem helps us to understand the problem in an appropriate way in a more detailed manner Right, so now let's talk about how we can propose the solution to that problem and how we can define it in, uh, in a detailed way that it can easily be understandable by the programmer. Okay, so if I talk about your book, so in the book there are three standard methods of solution that are being written or mentioned. Let me just uh, go through it one by one in a detailed way so that you can have an idea of how we can propose a solution. The names of these methods are, let's talk about it. The first one is structure diagram. Yes, you are going to learn about how we can make structure diagrams in order to propose a solution. The second one is flow charts. We will learn about flow charts and how they're going to be solving a problem. And the third one is pseudocode that is very important. So these three methods are being written in your book and we need to understand it one by one. Okay, so quickly moving towards structure diagrams, the very first. Okay, in structure diagrams, you have to just learn three things about structure diagrams. The very first thing is a structure diagram is a top-down design that we have earlier learned. In our previous videos, we have learned about the top-down design in which we break a system into subsystems, into further subsystems to get the detail or to just break down a particular problem into further smaller steps in order to understand it well. So this is a top-down design that is being used in structure diagrams. So the second is, it's a diagrammatical representation. So yes, diagrammatical representation is because we use boxes in order to make up structure diagrams. So we can say it's a diagrammatical representation of proposing a solution. And the third thing you need to understand is it's a hierarchy, hierarchical method. Let me explain you all of these things. Let's suppose I have a solution to a problem or I want to make up a system. So the system would be here. And since it's a hierarchy, so you're going to be using a top-down design in a hierarchical way, one after the other, in a particular order. Let's break up this big system into smaller systems. System 1, System 2. These are basically the childs of this main system. System 2. And further, if you want to design System 1, you can just break down this system one into its smaller units. Like this is subsystem 1.1, this is subsystem 1.2. Similarly, if you feel that system two can further be divided into its subunits or subsystems, so just divide it. Subsystem 2.1 and subsystem 2.2. So you can see that every subsystem is being derived from its parent. So this is a hierarchy that we follow, and this is what we call a top-down design. In this way, we propose our solution to a problem. I will make a separate video on structure diagram, and we will give an example in that. We will see how we can design a structure diagram in order to solve a particular problem with an example. So it would be more clear then. Now quickly moving towards the second proposed method of solution that is the flow chart method okay so in this method i want to explain you before going towards flow charts let me explain you the word algorithm i hope that you already know that the word algorithm means in computer science it is basically the set of instructions 
that you follow the instructions we follow to perform a task it is general these are the instructions but remember that these instructions are in order in a particular sequence the way they are being uh, implemented so this is algorithm now the flow chart let's talk about flow chart in flow chart you need to remember some things okay just like the structure diagrams it is again i'm talking about flow charts it's a diagrammatical representation you have to use some of the flow chart symbols in order to define the steps of performing a task it's a diagrammatical representation where you are going to use flow chart symbols that are predefined i will make a separate video on this flow chart symbols and its detail then after that for a flow chart you must know that these are basically the steps to perform a task because it is the representation of an algorithm steps to perform a task in an order so the third thing is it must be sequential or it must be in an order of performing these steps so this is how you are going to design a flow chart in order to make up a solution for a problem now let's talk about the third method that is the pseudo code method the difference between flow chart and pseudo code is that pseudo code pseudo code is basically not the diagrammatical representation it is just you write it in form of lines so this is one of the simplest form of we call it simplest form of showing or writing an algorithm again you have here you are going to have steps to perform task just like the flow chart and there must be a sequence or an order of these particular steps to be followed but the key thing about pseudo code is that here you are going to use the important thing is you are going to use the english keywords what i mean with this english keywords is that let's suppose if you want to take an input from a user so you are going to use the word input this is a keyword in order to input a data input your name so the user is going to write down its name or if you want to use conditional statements you can simply write if then else so this is just like a high level programming language but the good thing about pseudo code is you are not strictly bound for your syntax no the syntax can vary it is just you have to explain it well that what is the particular instruction about you just need to use simple english keywords in order to make your solution understandable so now let's see quickly the different examples of structure diagrams flow charts and pseudo codes so that you can easily understand all of these three methods okay so for your understanding i have uh, shared some of the common examples of structure diagrams flow chart and pseudo code so let's see it one by one the very first is the structure diagrams you can see that it is a diagrammatical representation and you are using boxes here in order to represent your system and subsystem like it's a message encryption system that is being created or that needs to be created by the programmer so here it is divided into two uh, sub 
systems that is encrypt and the other one is decrypt. So encrypt is further going to have three main functions input message, encrypt message, output encrypted message. And in de decrypt, again, you have to uh, divide it into further functions or further subsystems. That is input encrypted message, decrypt message, and output message. So this is how you are going to make a structure diagram for your system that needs to be proposed. Now, Quickly moving towards the next example, that is a flow chart. Here you can easily see that you have some of the flow chart symbols that is being used in order to make up a program or a solution. So there is a start, uh, or we can say it's a begin and symbol that is being used at the start of a pro flow chart and at the end of a flow chart, this one. So then we have some of the decision symbols and the process symbols. So this is how you're going to be making flowcharts to define your solution. The third one is the pseudocode. In pseudocode, you are going to write it in form of a statements, one by one. So look at this, how you are using the keywords, program, if, then, if, then, and, if, else. And these are basically the keywords that are being used to make the solution understandable by a programmer so that he can easily make a program later on. So these are three methods of proposing a solution to a given problem. Thank you so much for watching the video. In the next video, we are going to talk in detail about how to make a structured diagram for a given problem. Thank you so much. Stay tuned, stay connected and do not forget to subscribe. Bye-bye.